Hi everyone, this is Yvonne Salander from the Somerset County Library System with the fourth installment of this year's Book Lovers Tea. And this week I'm gonna be talking about thrillers and mysteries, and you'll kind of figure out that this is definitely my most favorite genre. So we're gonna start out with some thrillers. The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. In 1982, Viv Delaney disappeared from the front desk of the Sundown Motel in Fell, New York. In 2017, her niece, Carly, goes to Fell for answers. She happens to rent a room in the same apartment her aunt lived in and even gets her aunt's old job as the night clerk at the motel. Did Viv smell the phantom cigarette smoke like Carly does? Did she also experience the motel's doors opening and slamming and the lights flickering off? Or the beautiful ghostly woman who seems to only say one word, run. You Let Me In by Camilla Bruce. Cassandra Tipp, a famous romance novelist, disappeared a year ago. According to her will, if she's missing for over a year, she should be considered dead and her heirs, her sister's children, would inherit her estate under a condition. They must read the manuscript left behind on her writing desk and find the password. Then give that password to her solicitor. That's it. Easy, right? I read this book months ago and I still don't know if I was in their shoes, if I would give the solicitor that password. If you like psychological thrillers, this is one of the best ones I've read, period. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Maggie is famous because of the book her father wrote, a book that was an instant bestseller, a memoir of their short time living in a haunted house. When Maggie's father dies, he leaves her Bainbury Hall, the house. He owned it for these past 25 years and she never knew. Maggie heads there to get the house ready to sell and finally confront the ghosts of her past. What she discovers is more frightening than any book, even her father's book, could have prepared her to face. Please See Us by Caitlin Mullen. Lily flees her life for New York City for their childhood home in Atlantic City to recover from a failed relationship in the end of a promising career. Clara and her aunt run a tarot reading business on the boardwalk. Clara, who's always had a gift, is starting to have disturbing visions and doesn't know what to do about them as they threaten to overtake her life. This isn't a tracking down a serial killer book. That aspect of the book is all but missing, but you're not gonna miss it. This is the story of women who met tragic ends, a dying city, and two young women who are also in danger of falling through the cracks in the underbelly of Atlantic City. Dead to Her by Sarah Pimbao. Marcy was a waitress in a diner when she met Jason Maddox and they fell in love. It's taken her years to fit into the upper crust of Savannah society, but she's on the verge of being completely accepted. She can feel it. Enter the second, Mrs. William Radford, the fourth. The Radfords were the center of their social circle. The new Mrs. Radford, Keisha, is not at all what anyone would have expected. She's black, she's young, and she's British. When William left Savannah, a grieving widower, but comes back from his European holiday married to Keisha, people are a bit stunned. And Marcy sees how her husband is looking at young, sexy Keisha, and she doesn't like it one bit. The Guest List by Lucy Foley. The bride and groom look amazing together. The engagement was short, but when you know, you know, right? These two successful, beautiful people are set to take their vows on an island off the coast of Ireland with 150 of their closest friends, family members, and business associates. The wedding planner and chef are pros, the wedding party is all assembled, and the setting is perfect. Until a fierce storm comes in and someone is murdered during the reception. They Did Bad Things by Lauren A. Forey. In 1995, six university students share a home. By the end of the term, one of the housemates is dead. The police deemed it accidental. The survivors know one of them is a killer. Part psychological thriller, part locked room mystery, which I love, it is all edge of your seat guessing as things start happening 20 years later. I didn't see the end coming, will you? 
The Last Flight by Julie Clark. Claire and Eva are sitting together at a New York airport bar before their flights. They're both running from someone and they need to disappear. A casual conversation creates their spontaneous plan. They're gonna switch their luggage, their outerwear, and their tickets and board each other's flights. The cameras and airline information will show that they arrived at their destinations, but each woman will have traveled thousands of miles in the opposite direction. One flight is to California and the other is to Puerto Rico. Seems to be the perfect plan until the plane to Puerto Rico crashes on its way there. His and Hers by Alice Feeney. A serial killer is murdering women who were once friends in a small English village. Two exes, both of whom are pretty high up on the suspect list, will need to work together to try to figure out the identity of the murderer before one of them is either the next victim or thrown into jail. Imperfect Women by Araminta Hall. Eleanor, Nancy, and Mary have been friends since the first day of college. All these years later, they're still close. But are they really? Told by these three imperfect women, their stories, the story of their friendship, and the story of the night Nancy was murdered slowly merge to give a clear picture of their lives. Fans of domestic thrillers will find everything to like here. Darling Rose Gold by Stephanie Robel. This is the tale of Rose Gold Watts, the victim of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. But this isn't a women's fiction novel about her struggles and triumphs. Well, it is about her struggles and triumphs, but it's definitely a thriller. You see, Rose Gold has waited five years for her mother to be released from prison. Rose Gold is no longer a helpless victim. Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. Years ago, when he was new to his bookshop, as well as blogging, Malcolm Kershaw wrote a piece entitled Eight Perfect Murders, featuring the books he had, you know, he felt had the best, should have gotten away with it, murder plots of all times. Think, you know, strangers on a train. Now it looks like someone out there may be using his list to commit the perfect crimes. When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Sydney Green returns home to Brooklyn after her marriage dissolves. A victim of mental manipulation and gaslighting by her ex, she hopes being home with her mom is gonna help her heal. But her mother falls ill and gentrification has come to the neighborhood as rumors of a pharmaceutical headquarters being stationed nearby start to swirl. For sale signs are sprouting up everywhere. On the stoops of house proud neighbors, she knows have no plans on moving. And the residents are there one day and gone the next. Is she seeing conspiracies where they don't exist? Or is something sinister really happening? Who would believe her? What is going on? When I saw this book described as a combination of Rear Window meets Get Out, I didn't quite believe the hype. Believe the hype. The Holdout by Graham Moore. Bobby Nock, a young African-American teacher, is on trial for the murder of Jessica Silver, his student and a white billionaire's daughter. All the evidence is circumstantial since Jessica's body has never been found. Maya, a young juror, is the only one to find Bobby Nock not guilty during the first vote of deliberations. Over the course of a few weeks, she manages to sway the entire jury and Bobby Nock is set free. Popular opinion was that Bobby was guilty and the jury members have been hounded by the press and the public after the trial because of what they thought was a wrong verdict. Ten years later, one of the jurors claims to have new evidence. A true crime podcast is reuniting all of the jurors in the same hotel they were sequestered in a decade ago to interview them and get them to weigh in on the new findings. But now one of the jurors is dead. Maya's the prime suspect, and no one has any idea what this new evidence could be. Maya has to solve the juror's murder, possibly Jessica's as well, before she's the one who ends up on trial for murder this time around. The Night Swim by Megan Golden. Rachel has a successful true crime podcast entering its third season. She's already sent an innocent man free and solved the cold case. This time, she's putting her listeners in the jury box. An Olympic hopeful swimmer is accused of raping a high school student after a house party. He denies any wrongdoing and swears she was a willing participant. The victim is being vilified for bringing the case to trial and ruining the swimmer's life. 
Why would a girl relive her rape on the stand in a courtroom full of strangers if she wasn't actually raped? Why is rape so divisive while murder is not? Will the court of public opinion have the same verdict as the jury? He started it by Samantha Downing. Three estranged siblings are forced to relive a road trip with their grandfather that he took them on decades before in order to inherit his fortune. As they travel from strange attraction to the next, Beth, the sibling who narrates the story, reveals more about the initial journey that they are retracing. The first strange thing readers learn is that their grandfather didn't get permission from their parents when he took them on the initial road trip or across the country. More is revealed at each stop about the past and the present, and the shocks just keep on coming. This book will make you glad that road trips are not very popular during COVID times. Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. A family of four has settled into their secluded Airbnb house rental in Eastern Long Island to enjoy their well-deserved vacation. And then there's a knock at the door. It's a couple claiming to be the owners. They drove out there not knowing where else to go because of the blackout in Manhattan. With the satellite television out, no cell service, how can anyone know what is really going on? And now, here are some mysteries. Long Bright River by Liz Moore. Casey and Mickey are sisters living in the Kensington area of Philadelphia. They have lived there their entire lives near the Delaware River, always in Philly, and yet they haven't really spoken in five years. Sure, they sometimes meet while Mickey's working and need to exchange words, but it's all business. Mickey is a beat cop, and Casey is an addict, sometimes working the streets to get her next fix. Now Casey is missing, and Mickey is desperately trying to find her. Someone is stalking the women of Kensington. Is Casey another victim? Seeing addiction through the eyes of Mickey humanized and brought empathy to the people fighting to get sober or desperately needing the next fix. Mickey has only told one other cop, her former partner, that her sister is working the streets. And that was only because they needed to arrest her one day. She doesn't want her history getting out in the department, so she's on her own to find her sister. Winter Counts by David Heska Wombly Wyden. Virgil Wounded Horse doles out justice with his fists when the law fails the victims of crime on the Rosebud Indian Reservation. It's a role he fell into and one that he takes very seriously. When heroin comes to the reservation and his nephew is the latest victim, Virgil makes it his mission to track down the drug dealers to stop this latest horror from killing the youth on the reservation. Pretty disturbing to learn how the law operates on reservations. The feds could decide what to investigate and what not to. And that is why so many domestic violence cases are not pursued by the legal system and the abusers are not brought to justice. Unless, of course, someone like Virgil Wounded Horse is called in. Yeah, it's vigilante justice, but when the alternative is to do nothing, is it the better of two evils? It's questions like these that separate this book from most mysteries because it brings up ethical, legal, and moral questions. And Now She's Gone by Rachel Housel Hall. Detected with an interesting and troubled backstory? Check. Realistic clue gathering and stakeouts? Check that box too. A straightforward case that becomes so much more? Oh yeah, there is a big check on that one. Grayson Sykes is hired to find Dr. Ian O'Donnell's missing girlfriend, Isabel Lincoln. But really, Ian just wants Kenny G, his adorable Labradoodle back. Jason's first, Grayson's first case as a PI shouldn't be hard, but nothing is as it seems with this missing woman. The Finders by Jeffrey B. Burton. Mace Reed trains dogs, both for civilians and for law enforcement, especially human remains recovery dogs. When foul play is suspected, he and his canines are called into search. The newest member of his canine team, Vira, short for Elvira, is a natural. She can sniff out the dead, but it also seems that she can sniff out killers. After all, the stink of death must be on the perpetrator of the heinous act, right? That's how Mace explains it to himself after Virus shows off her special skills. He'll need all his wits and her special skill set since a killer is now after them both. A Bad Day for Sunshine by Dorinda Jones. Sunshine Vikram is the new sheriff in town. She grew up in the tiny New Mexico town of Del Sol and she's pretty sure she's happy to be returning there, but she's kind of shocked that she's the new mayor. 
I mean, she's qualified at all, but she never ran for office. But somehow she won. She's convinced her parents and her mom's book club had something to do with her election victory, but she's going to have to figure that out later. On her first morning on the job, a car crashes through the plate glass window of her building and just misses crushing her. As if that wasn't enough excitement for the first day of work, the distraught woman driving the car is there to report that her daughter has been kidnapped. So begins a whirlwind case that drags everyone's sunshine nose into the fray. Del Sol is a strange place. Strange things happen there, and I do mean strange, but I can't wait to join Sunshine and her crew of deputies there again in the sequel. And finally, The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. A man is dead. Oh, wait, no, two. No, wait a minute, three. Three people are dead, and The Thursday Murder Club, they couldn't be happier. What is The Thursday Murder Club? It's a group of four septuagenarians who meet in the jigsaw puzzle room of their retirement village on Thursday afternoons to review cold case files they shouldn't have in their possession in the first place. But now they're in the middle of a real live case and they know the new police detective in town obviously needs their help. That's how a former spy, semi-retired psychologist, retired nurse, and a professional protester get involved in a case that gets more complicated at every turn. I loved spending time with the Thursday Murder Club. Ibrahim, the psychologist, reflects on what a joy it is to live where he does. You want company? You open the door. If you don't, you close it. And the dynamics of the village are always changing because your neighbors can change from one day to the next. Yes, there is grief and mourning in the serious business of getting older, but there are new beginnings, new friendships, and new adventures. I do hope I will have the chance to hang out with these wonderfully interesting people again. They're better be a sequel. So thank you for joining me in this installment. Next week for the final installment of the Book Lovers Tea, I'll be talking about things that are coming soon. So books coming out from November through February of 2021. Keep reading.